Welcome to part two of our discussion on temperaments. In part one, we talked about the yellow temperament, and today we're going to talk about the red. And we're continuing our conversation Mm -hmm. with Kathleen Adelman. Now, Kathleen has invested in so many of us personally. She's definitely the expert to help us learn more about our wiring Mm -hmm. and especially how it impacts our communication with our kids. I'm a red. (laughs) I'm really excited about our conversation today. Kathleen, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. I'm excited to talk about reds, too. I, I really am. I think they're. I think they. We really have to have a good new fresh outlook for Reds. I love that. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Um, okay, so we have a ton of content today, parents. I hope you have a notebook and a pen, and you're ready to take a lot of notes. Uh, and so let's jump in. So you tell us that every temperament has its strengths. Yes. So let's talk about the strengths of the Red temperament. Well, what we're going to first start off with is finding is really talking about what's unique to that temperament. Uh-huh. Before we get into the strengths, every temperament, like we had said, has something unique to them that no other temperament has. And what the Reds have is their visionaries. Mm -hmm. These people can see and achieve a goal like no other temperament. Mm -hmm. They can see it. They go from A to B, and it's clear as a day. Mm -hmm. I think you and I even talked a little bit about the kitchen, right? And how we Uh see that differently. Because your vision is... That it looks neat and clean. It's a visual (laughs) thing for me. It looks neat and clean and together. Yeah. 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 Where mine is, I just want to be efficient and know where everything is. Yeah. So mine is more of the obstacles between A and B where yours is the vision, which is what you own. Right. Yeah, so interesting. So we just built a house, which I have never done before. Okay. Don't really want to do it again. But <laughs> um, when we were we were doing it, I had a very clear vision of what I wanted, the layout, mm-hmm. every room, all of that. And there are a lot of obstacles to building mm-hmm. a house, but I just clearly kept that vision and I, I pushed with contractors and mm-hmm. things when it wasn't meeting the vision. And I, I love our house at the yeah. end of it because yeah. it met the expectation that I was going for. So I can think of that in many areas in my work and lots of places. And I bet that vision, that house really is almost exact. It is. Of what you first thought. It is. Right? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I actually drew it out on a piece of graph paper and took it to the architect and said, this is what I want. This is what I want. (laughs) And now you live in it. And now I live in it. How great is that? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. Okay, so hopefully parents are beginning to uh, understand their own temperament and wiring and learning more about that. But we're really here to help them discover more about their kids. Right. So can you kind of tell us about a red child, uh, kind of from the preschool years, elementary, Mm -hmm. middle school, high school, like just give us a vision of what that looks like. And this is so fun because... Because you can start to understand your child's temperament mm-hmm. as early as nine months. Mm-hmm. And the one that's very <laughs> evident early on yeah. is the red. Yeah. So in, you know, baby and toddler, the strengths of that temperament are going to be, they're going to be adventurous. They're going to be independent. They're going to want things to be responsible for uh-huh. at two, three, four years old. Yeah. Self-directed, determined. Yeah. You know, they're going to get in the car seat and you're going to ask them for help and they're going to go, no, yeah. you know. Uh, the weaknesses that may show up at that time mm-hmm. is they're going to be hard to nap. Yeah. Um, they're going to be demanding, mm-hmm. right? Uh, strong-willed, bossy, and maybe physical. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to get up into that pre-te- pre-teen mm-hmm. section. Yeah. Um, the strengths you'll see, they'll be self-sufficient. Mm-hmm. They'll be responsible. They'll be confident. They're great help- helpers, mm-hmm. and they're really good at learning mm-hmm. at that point mm-hmm. because they love knowledge and power. Like, they love to figure out stuff because yeah. it's a challenge, yeah. right? Uh, the weaknesses that may start to show up at that preteen is mm-hmm. bossiness, blindly stubborn, yeah. right? Strong will. The ends justify the means. Mm-hmm. Um argumentative, Mm -hmm. and unrepentant. This is what you're going to see. Pre-teen will rear its head. After teenage years, uh, the strengths, they're going to be making their own decisions. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have loyal friends. They are going to be able to see that big picture. You'll see more of the visionary, right? Yeah. Uh, They'll excel in emergencies. They'll be very good at encouraging other people. Um, What's going to start rearing its head, though, in those teen years are always being right. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, argumentative because they think they know it all. Blaming others. Mm -hmm. Um, That's going to be a big one. Over-opinionated and cannot admit mistakes when they're Mm -hmm. wrong. So that's going to start really coming up in those teenage years. 
the things that this particular child mm-hmm. is going to avoid is boring people and boring mm-hmm. tasks. <laughs> they want adventure and they want mm-hmm. challenge. Um, they're going to avoid work or games that they cannot achieve or win. Mm-hmm. And uh, taking responsibility. Like sometimes the blaming thing can get out of mm-hmm. hand. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have the right shoes. The coach didn't, you know, put me in at the right time. It will always be someone else's mm-hmm. fault. So they're going to avoid taking responsibility. Mm-hmm. But they're going to be attracted to people who give them the opportunity to be in the decision. Yeah. They're going to be attracted to independence. They're going to be attracted to that adventure yeah. that comes with that red temperament. Yeah. Uh, it makes so much sense. So I, I have a grandson that has got to have a lot of red uh-huh. in him as well. <laughs> and uh, when I, the other day we were playing red light, green light. Oh, and he wanted goodness. to, like, change the whole rules of it. And my only purpose in that game was to make him run because he needed to, like, burn off some steam. <laughs> and uh, he wanted to change the whole rules. And I kept going, that is not how you play the game. And I don't want to play it that way. And I, I had a moment of looking in his eyes of two reds kind of mm-hmm. locking horns. You know what I mean? I, got, I was like, okay, one of us has to back down a little bit <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> on a silly hysterical. game like red light, green yeah. light. It surprises me you say that they don't like to take responsibility mm-hmm. because I I don't know. I would assume the opposite. Like mm-hmm. in order to kind of have control, you want to take responsibility. Mm-hmm. But there is a lot of blaming in a red, yeah. you see. Yeah. But I want to clarify that. They want responsibility yeah. of things to be in control of. Okay. Like things to be independent Yes. With. But if something doesn't go their way in their weakness or right. they don't win— yeah. They're not going to be. They're not going to be done. saying, "Oh, I didn't tie my shoes correctly." Yeah. Or yeah, the coach or the referee was right. Yeah. They're immediately going to go to blame. Sure. You know, it was muddy. You know, I didn't yeah. have the right cleats. You know, yeah. Instead of saying, you know what, I just I have to learn this better. Yeah. Right. For sure. And I definitely can relate. I have a hard time sticking with anything that I think isn't going to win. Mm-hmm. You know, as soon as I can, <laughs> as soon as I can see that's not going to win. I want to be done with it. You start losing energy. Yeah, I start losing steam Mm -hmm. for it, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so all of our temperaments have very specific needs. Yes. And so let's talk for a minute. What are the needs of a red temperament? Uh Well, the red temperaments, again, these are like food and water. I cannot Mm -hmm. stress this any more clearly that this is what parents really want to memorize, meditate in, not only for themselves, because you have to know yourself first in order to know your children, Mm -hmm. but for the red, it's loyalty, sense of control, Mm -hmm. appreciation, and credit for work. Mm -hmm. So what loyalty looks like, this is really important, Mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, loyalty is is a big deal to Mm -hmm. reds. Being prioritized and knowing you have their back. Mm there was a group of fifth grader girls and they're texting each other and one was red and she confided in her girlfriends Mm -hmm. that she liked a boy. Yeah. Well, then on social media, the boy mentioned that he knew she liked him. Mm. What do you think that, how that went, Kendra? Broke. She done with those friends. (laughs) Yeah, see? They were immediate. I mean, right? Yeah. You just, the reds just checked the box. Yeah. Somebody had betrayed her. Yeah. Somebody didn't have her back. Yeah. And kept that secret. And it is, it is important to know that a red or a blue will just check the box sure. and move on, yeah. right? Um, sense of control, mm-hmm. which is the misconception with reds. Yeah. Um, you want everybody pulling their weight and following mm-hmm. the plan. Mm-hmm. Is it true to say that most reds don't really want to be in control? Mm-hmm. You want them, the people yeah. around you to be doing what I they're do. talented, yeah. right? I love it when they all do their best. And, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it was funny, too, because I had a neighbor whose daughter sold Girl Scout cookies, mm-hmm. and she told me that she went, I think they were outside of a grocery store or something, and they showed up, and nobody had set up the table, mm-hmm. and the girls were just over talking, and this young girl, this young red girl looks up immediately and says, well, they're lucky I'm here. <laughs> I can fix it. They didn't have anybody to tell them what to do. Yeah. Right? Because nobody was pulling their weight or yeah. doing, and she just stepped right yeah. in. Yeah. Right? And I think, honestly, she was like only about seven. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, it makes sense. Red's definitely, <laughs> uh, they love it when everything, everyone is doing their best and they're yeah. not needed, but they're also very capable of stepping oh, in. Yeah. And they'll do it in the same. Yeah. But I like the people to know that that's not necessarily what yeah. they want is yeah. control. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, appreciation, being valued for their unique strengths. Mm-hmm. Um, this is something where, uh, again, when, um, my sister's daughter was a toddler and she 
went and she got all her sister's diapers and she stacked them underneath mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. crib and they were all perfectly done. And, you know, Michelle just looked at her and said, oh my gosh, that was amazing that you did that. I really appreciate mm-hmm. you helping me out and you mm-hmm. thought that through. Yeah. And then you followed through and did it. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. It's that appreciation, that inward, that you thought mm-hmm. about something yeah, and then you did it. Um, Reds like that appreciation, yeah. knowing that you thought it through. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That sure. feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's so funny. Uh, I think as being a Red, a lot of people don't think you need appreciation because yeah. you seem very independent yeah. or like you got it, you got it handled mm-hmm. and you'll be fine. But you're right. Appreciation goes yeah. a long way, especially it, genuinely knowing what you did. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's not just a pat on the back. Right. You don't want a pat on the back because nope. you know you're going to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you're going to do it good, but to acknowledge uh, what went on behind there to get to that point, yeah. that's true appreciation. Appreciation's inward. Yeah. Where credit for work is outward. Yeah. So this looks like being valued for their contributions. Mm-hmm. So when we lived in Maryland, Brad was building a shed, and this teenage boy that lived in the cul-de-sac, totally red, came right over. Mm-hmm. Didn't ask permission. Didn't He just started carrying tools, carrying wood, mm-hmm. helping Brad. He helped him get it done. Yeah. And so Brad was like, gosh, thank you so much yeah. for just stepping in and helping. Yeah. You know, I really appreciate that. You know, you could have mm-hmm. been doing anything else today. Yeah. But you really, you know, came and helped me out. Just, I just thank you. Hard work. Yeah. yeah. That's so You know, great. credit for yeah. work. So yeah. all those things yeah. really are what is the love tank of the yeah. red. Yeah. So I love that you told parents, like, you need to memorize these for all your kids oh. as we go through all of them. Because these are, this is kind of like the secret to unlocking really parenting and communication mm-hmm. with your kids, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. These are the game changers. Yeah. In yeah. every relationship. Yes. You know, this will change every single conversation and every single relationship. Yeah. If we'll just at least know the four needs of the temperament. Yeah. Just memorize those and yeah. use those words as a cheat sheet. Sure. If you have to. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay. So again, we've all met, you know, kids. I've My own kids, I've watched them when I can see their needs are not being met. And I start seeing uh, behaviors in them. And I can imagine that there's very specific <laughs> behaviors in a red. Might have, I might have done a few of them myself um, that we would see when needs are not being met. So talk to us a little bit about that. Again, what we're watching for is Mm -hmm. when uh, our goal is, even with the red, is to really fertilize and have your child thrive in their strengths. Uh And then we want to be really alert when they're starting to use those weaknesses Uh to fill these innate needs, like being bossy or intolerant Mm -hmm. or impatient. But where the red flag goes off, again, is when the behavior turns to manipulate spy. Mm -hmm. When the impatient and the bossy seems not to work anymore, all of a sudden you'll see tone and volume. Mm -hmm. You're going to see harsh, biting comments. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a tone, which is anger outbursts, Mm -hmm. right? And that's, again, where we want that pause. Yeah. Just, uh, it can be overwhelming sometimes yeah. to some of the temperaments, and even a red yeah. wants to retaliate immediately, yeah. right? But if we'll pause and we'll ask, what innate need is not being met right yeah. now, right? So, for example, um, uh, somebody again that you and I know mm-hmm. has a little red one, and when she was in the crib, um, I can't remember exactly how many months she was, maybe twenty months or so. Um, she would say, mommy, mommy, yeah. right? Yeah. But when that loyalty didn't happen and that sense of control didn't happen, all of a sudden she's saying, Jenny, yeah. Jenny, <laughs> right? She's And it's louder uh-huh. and there's a tone uh-huh. because uh-huh. she's like, come and get me yeah. right now. I Pay have attention. to get out and control this household, right? <laughs> um, and then in that preteen, um, I had this Young girl, oh my gosh, Kendra, she was great. She's a red mm-hmm. in a family of all greens. Oh, wow. Okay, so you already feel yes. for a little bit because, yes, you know, I greens do. and reds, mm-hmm. that's the hardest combination. Yeah. yeah. And she comes into my office and my chart is sitting there and she just sits at the end edge of the co- sofa and looks at me. And I go, well, you know, do you know why you're here? She goes, yep. <laughs> and I go, why? And she goes, red. <laughs> and I go, why red? Anger. Uh, Why anger? Yeah. Sisters, am I done here? 
I mean, in the yeah. she, up and she cut out. to the chase. <laughs> no fluff, yeah. no anything. She yeah. said it and she was out the door. Yeah. It was hysterical. The tone was just yeah. so red. Yeah. Um, and then the 13 plus, um, you know, I, I, this girl, she could literally run a, run a company right now. And yeah. I think she's only like 13 or 14, but her brother is blue. Yeah. And so she, instead of speaking his language, mm-hmm. is telling him, clean the living room. Yeah. This is how you do it. Yeah. And she walks away and she comes back and he's just stuffing things in because he's a green blue. <laughs> and she's like, that's not how you do it. And she's starting to get angry. Uh-huh, and, tell uh-huh. and every time she did this, yeah. he responded by going slower. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he's like, you know that's not how we clean this house. Uh-huh. That's not where that goes. And he was like, hey, out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then he just walks away. And yeah. what does she do? She's like, throwing things. Nobody does this right. And I always have to do it. Yeah. You know, so she just starts to, you know, again, that loyalty wasn't there. Yeah. That appreciation wasn't there. But also her tone and volume didn't really speak to the person she was speaking to. Sure. You know? Sure. I remember uh, I, my dad is a red. I didn't have those those words for it when I was a kid. But yeah. as a teenager, I can remember several times, even mentally, thinking both of us want control right now. Mm-hmm. Like even really? as a teenager, I could remember mm-hmm. mentally thinking both of us want control and kind of evaluating, do I back off or do I not? Wow. <laughs> Isn't that something? But that I, re- is. I remember kind of like thinking that because he wanted it too. Mm-hmm. And I was just debating, what are my chances here? Do I keep fighting this or do I, is it time to back off? Which that, is that's probably... All- uh, terrible and insightful of me, but. That, but but you know what? That's exactly well, how great was that? that yeah. Without even having the words around yeah. it, yeah. You realize the innate need, yeah. And you initiated a pause, yeah. Before yeah. you even knew this yeah. stuff, yeah. And that's where if we can just get people to realize, mm-hmm. you know, the one thing that all the temperaments share is selfishness, yeah. But if we could have a servant's heart. You you literally stopped yeah. and said, "Is this the most efficient? Is this yeah. benefiting the conversation yeah. between me and my dad?" Yeah, yeah, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Good yeah. job, oh, God. You know, I remember uh, reading long time ago and teaching this a lot in leadership of the difference between reacting and responding, which oh. is just that pause you're talking yes. about in parenting. That is so important. Instead of just going with your gut, mm-hmm. which you're tempted to want to do, especially mm-hmm. when you're the adult, you think you're right and they're mm-hmm. the child is just to take a breath mm-hmm. and push that pause button and and respond yes. rather than just going with your gut and reacting. Yeah. Because the yeah. reaction is usually hooked to yeah. the what that's happening. Yeah. The response will always be hooked to the why. Yeah, yeah. And we have to figure out the why. Yeah. And that's what we're going to talk about and talk to our children about and lift them up. Yeah. You know. So I would imagine red temperaments tend to seem kind of strong Mm -hmm. and like you can't really ruffle them or you can't (laughs) hurt their feelings or things like that. So tell us a little bit about like what tears down, what do you need to be careful not to tear down a red? Yeah. And and I love how you just described that because they are warriors. There's no doubt about it. But when it comes into their circle, their mm-hmm. family and their friends, this is this is a very loyal person. Mm-hmm. And yeah. inside of you, Kendra, yeah. I know yeah. there's mush and emotion in there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah there um, is. And you're and you're <laughs> the older feeling, I get, the yeah. more there is. <laughs> and especially when you look at your grandkids, yeah. right? There there is there is and it's deep emotion yeah. and you can be hurt. Yeah. So what we want to refrain from is making decisions for them, mm-hmm. um, not doing what you say you're going to do, mm-hmm. embarrassing them in front of their peers. Mm-hmm. This is something that goes from childhood to adulthood. Sure. They do not want to be embarrassed in front of their peers, mm-hmm. not recognizing their accomplishment or believing in their abilities and leaving them out of decisions. Mm-hmm. That's a huge thing. Sure. Not standing up for them. Mm-hmm is really important. Mm -hmm. Um, So I really, there was just this recent client and he told me about his son being really upset in a soccer game that they won, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) And he got in the car and he's kicking the back of the seat and he's visibly angry. And the dad's like, what is wrong? You know? And the son said, I have been practicing so hard. I wanted to win. I wanted to score the leading, you know, the winning point, Mm -hmm. be the lead scorer. And his dad responded was like, 
hey, dude, you know, you played good. Yeah. You won. You know, get over it. We're singing. I mean, yeah, we totally <laughs> missed yeah. the point, you yeah. know, of speaking life words mm-hmm. over him. And For again, sure. it's just thinking of those innate needs. Mm-hmm. The dad could have said, gosh, I admire how much work you've put into this. You've really dedicated yourself to practicing and you do it for hours a day. Mm-hmm. I see that you want to do your best. I admire that and I appreciate that. And, um, you know, I-, I want you to know that you bring your best to the field every day. Mm-hmm. Every day you bring your best to the field and you did that today. And I want you to know that that makes me proud. Yeah, I love that. Okay, and if we would just pause and speak mm-hmm. into those innate needs, yeah. you know, we yeah. could build them up instead of tear them down. Yeah, and I know that's the heartbeat of why you like to teach this, yes. is uh, not only to avoid tearing them down, but this ability we have to actually speak life into our kids and, yeah. and to speak words that build them up. So right. um, not only avoid things that hurt them, but yes. actually flip it and find your way to speak right to their needs. Yeah. So good. Okay, so most a lot of parents are wired very differently mm-hmm. than their children, right? So <laughs> yeah. you might have a red child and like my husband, be a green yeah. maybe or be a yellow or a blue. So mm-hmm. talk to us a little bit about if you're wired very differently from your child, mm-hmm. how do you interact with a red? Yeah. Well, again, what I always like to tell parents yeah. is you were uniquely picked for your children. Right. So there's something, Kendra, in your red temperament mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that your children needed. Yeah. Just like there was something in my blue temperament that my children mm-hmm. needed. God's very intentional. So if you're a yellow parent and you are parenting a red child, mm-hmm. tone down your enthusiasm. As a yellow, you're very enthusiastic. Your enthusiasm's high and your need for fun is not matched Mm -hmm. in this red child. They're more about production and achievement, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Realize that not everything needs to be fun. Yeah. I mean, yellow parents love to have fun just like yellow kids, Mm -hmm. right? But not for red. Not everything has to be done. Uh, Many of the fun activities and ideas may look silly Mm -hmm. to your red child. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to keep that in mind. Um, They don't want to look stupid. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, Uh they definitely— would rather not play games they can't win. Yeah. Like, you know, not keeping score. Yeah. And again, not that you have to do that all the time, but yeah. yellows want to watch yeah. that. Um, you want to give them facts. Yeah. You want to use fewer words, like I said, and cast a vision for your red child to know that they, that you, the yellow parent is strong enough mm-hmm. to handle them. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's because key. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. that red child is seeing you know, how he can run that household. Yep. Right? (laughs) So true. Um, For if there's two reds, this is like you and your dad. Yeah. This is by far the most power-packed combination in a parent-child. Yeah. And prepare for battle. Yeah. I mean, it's a battle every day. It may feel like an argument or a battle to just to prove who's Mm -hmm, boss or mm -hmm. who's the chief in the kitchen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, But— Let's not, as a red parent, try to pull rank all the time. As long as your child's included in the conversation Mm -hmm. or as part of the process, um, then they're going to feel somewhat like they have some control. Yeah. Right? Um, Redirect the solutions. Like, Mm -hmm. we want to make sure that anything that's discussed, and rather than getting stuck in arguments, Mm -hmm. have them be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. You know, ask them their ideas and bring, you know, solutions Mm -hmm. into the discussion. Sure. Right? And give them the opportunity and and choose to make decisions when appropriate. Mm-hmm. You know, age appropriate decisions, mm-hmm. and then let them do it. Mm-hmm. Like we can, we don't want to fix it. We don't want to tell them it's wrong. Yeah, let them do it. Yeah, right. And yeah. if they fail, they'll learn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you're a blue parent mm-hmm. with a red child. You cannot take the Reds' arguments personally. Yeah. Blues have a tendency to take everything personally. This combination um, can experience a lot of frustration Mm -hmm. when the child insists on doing everything their own way. Right. Especially when a blue thinks it's not the right way. Yeah. (laughs) Okay? Because your motto is just do it. Yeah. And you're usually right. Yeah. My motto is if it's worth doing it, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right, right? right? right. So you can see the conflict already. Mm -hmm. Um, It's crucial that this child is given the ability to have some control, Mm -hmm. which for a blue parent, relinquishing control Mm -hmm. um, of 
you know, this might not end up perfect Mm -hmm. or it might not be exactly as I want it and Mm -hmm. I might have to do it over. Yeah. Really is hard for a blue parent. That's the parent that sweeps in and I'll, you know, I'll do it because I want it done a certain way. Mm -hmm. Um, Keep communication short and to the point. Give them the details. Mm -hmm. You're like a detail, detail, bottom line. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Only give them supporting details if they ask for it. Mm-hmm. See, because we're excessive on details, mm-hmm. us blue parents. Yeah. So we have to watch that. The green, red. Now, this I'm going to tell you right now. The green parent with the red child mm-hmm. is the hardest combination. Green, red is the hardest. Yeah. But this is something that the green parent's going to wake up every day a new day showing who's in charge. Mm-hmm. And it and it can be exhausting for a green mm-hmm. parent. Stating your strengths and being calm in the battles yeah. will help. Them being able to bring calmness into mm-hmm. the environment mm-hmm. is going to help that red child. Yeah. Definitely. Advocating for yourself and your ideas and keeping them in line um, will show that red child child that you're up for the challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, saying something and holding your line. And again, it doesn't, it can be calm. It can be consistent, Mm -hmm. but that's going to show them that there's a boundary Mm -hmm. or a structure. Um, The red child is going to push to make Mm -hmm. sure you are up for the challenge, (laughs) right? The minute you start relaxing or sitting down, but um, we don't want that that energy to overwhelm that green yeah. parent because it can be overwhelming. Yeah. So the child's going to push the boundaries yeah. on that green parent a lot, looking really for safety and structure. Yeah. That's what children look for. Yeah. And that that um, green that has a tendency to be very flexible and mm-hmm. adaptable mm-hmm. for a red child, yeah. we're going to have to hold that line. Yeah. Right? So you want, with the calmness of the green, bringing in that, it'll be a win-win. Yeah. combination. Yeah. Uh, my husband is a green. We were yeah. talking about that a little while ago. And uh, I can so see what you're talking about mm-hmm. with our kids. And uh, even just like in training the dog, like he is super flexible. Play, he plays with the dog every day, walks him, all the things. I'm the one who the dog obeys, sits, <laughs> does all the commands, you know, kind of things. Like it's uh, it's just a very different relationship that he has had with the kids. Uh for sure, because he is wired to be green. Mm-hmm. And I have a couple that have that red in them for sure. And yeah. they definitely would challenge. And I, as a red parent, had to learn to back off. And I wanted to step in and go like, no, mm-hmm. this is how this is going to go. Yeah. I had to be really careful not to do yeah. that with him. Yeah. You know, to let him lead them in his way, which yeah. was different than mine. Yeah. And yeah. it is totally yeah. different, right? Yeah. Because it's just from, a again, it's from the different lens. Yes. And that's where we really have to look through our lens, but then paradigm shift and look into the lens of the child, Yeah, right? And I love what you said at the beginning that uh, God made you, gave you these kids for a reason. Mm -hmm. Like you're, and I I just think that's so true. Red, sometimes we think we're always right and our way is the right way, you know, kind of thing is to, it has been really good for me to look at uh, what my husband, who's a green, brings to the table Mm -hmm. for my children that they desperately need, that isn't naturally in me to bring for them, you know, right. kind of thing. So I, I think that is really important for parents who are listening to go like, I am not up for the challenge of this red child of mine to go like, yes, you are. You're exactly, You're exact. God made you. You're exactly what they need. You are the exact yeah. parent they need. And I'll give you some kudos for the reds. You yeah. said, you know, you think you're right. You are usually right. Yeah. I, I'm saying that <laughs> in a podcast that uh-huh. people are hearing yeah. and listening to, and it's being filmed, and uh, people are going to go, no, don't say that. <laughs> but, but the thing is, it's true. Yeah. You are usually right. But if we can teach those red children to take in more information, mm-hmm. to um, realize that there's more ways to be right mm-hmm. than just one, yeah. um, then that's the ch- red child that's going to become a great leader yeah. or a great husband or yeah. a great wife, yeah. right? So that's going to be really important. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so for our parents who are trying to like discover, especially parents of young children, yeah. the temperament of their kids, it's important for them to know that nobody's really just one temperament. Right. And there's a secondary temperament at play mm-hmm. in almost everybody. So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. So the, de- the in the temperament, as we discussed before, mm-hmm. there's a dominant and a secondary. Mm-hmm. You always want to start with an obvious dominant to yeah. really get a hold of innate needs and start learning the other language. Yeah. But the secondary 
definitely changes. Mm -hmm. A a red, a yellow red looks very different than a yellow blue or green. Yeah. And remember, it's always going to be horizontal or vertical, never diagonal. We're never going to be polar opposite Mm -hmm. of ourself, right? So um, when you're talking about like a yellow child with a red background, Mm -hmm. like yellows, they're dominant, reds, they're secondary. Mm -hmm. Um, It's going to look something like this. It or, or let's even change that around because we're talking about reds. Let's mm-hmm. say a red child with a yellow background, say they're going to invite friends over. Mm-hmm. They're going to be like, I want my friends to come over at four yeah. and I'm just going to see who can show up. Uh-huh. Anybody, the more the merrier, uh-huh. but it's going to be at four, okay? If it's a red blue child, uh-huh. they will say, I'm going to have friends over at four, mm-hmm. but I'm only going to do that if Benny can come over. Got gotcha. yeah. You know, he's going to be much more specific Mm -hmm. on whoever the friend is because he's blue. Right. And it's not more the merrier. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's the more the overwhelming, (laughs) right? Where that red yellow is the more the merrier. Right. But I want to be in control of the situation. Right. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, Okay. What does every red temperament want? What what do they want everyone to know? And again, I love us asking these questions, Kendra, because— I think it, we even touched on it a little bit earlier. Sometimes when reds get to tone and volume, mm-hmm. or sometimes just in their daily talk, because it's so bullet point and bottom line, mm-hmm. sometimes it can come across as an order yeah. or a command yeah. to other people. Yeah. You know, you come in and you go, put the shelves there. Yeah. Okay. What the Reds want you to know is that they're not just always shooting an order or mm-hmm. giving a command. Mm-hmm. They've thought through their decisions. Mm-hmm. They have a thought process, and there's a good reason mm-hmm. behind it. Mm-hmm. So even though you and other Reds don't always share that with yeah. people, yeah, you want us to know that. So yeah. if you were to come in and say that, yeah. I can immediately give you grace yeah. and go, She's probably measured it. She's thought about it. <laughs> she knows those are the yeah. exact cabinets yeah. that are going to fit there. Yeah. And then I can then turn around and give you appreciation yeah. and credit for work and yeah. have your back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That makes so much sense. Mm-hmm. And you're right. Usually by the time I'm being clear about whatever yeah. it is that I want, I have measured it, thought mm-hmm. about it, uh, researched it, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever is yeah. needed. So I think that's true of a lot of reds. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. It's yeah. so helpful. Yeah. I know... Uh, talking with you has always helps me learn more about myself. So I really appreciate that. Uh, before we go, mm-hmm. what's one more thing you want want to say to Reds? This is so important because I feel out of all the temperaments, yes. Reds stay most consistent yes. to their true temperament from mm-hmm. very early on mm-hmm. all the way through. And really, I really feel that, again, out of all the temperaments, I think the Reds are asked more to adapt or to bend to the other temperaments. And I would really like to see us bend to the Reds more often. Hmm. It was so interesting. I read that yesterday Mm -hmm. and I was like, I've never heard anybody say that. And that's very true. And I do think Reds are often reading other people and adjusting themselves Mm -hmm. according to what will make others comfortable. So it's so interesting that you say that. Well, thank you for being with us today. And parents, I um, know you have learned so much more. This has been very helpful for you if you have a red child. So thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.